sure if you can see that, spin it faster. Bit of a wobble in that wheel. Not too happy with that wobble. Um, it doesn't affect anything because I don't have rim brakes, but uh, I can see it and that's enough. There's two pulls to the right on it. One just behind the valve. Which I'll attend to now. Ideally, of course, you should take the tyre off. But we're all grown ups, I know the risks, and I can accept the responsibility. Okay, so the way we uh, adjust this, quite loose anyway, these spokes, they might all need tightening, but uh, basically to move the wheel that way, I need to loosen a couple of spokes on this side and tighten on this side. I'm only going to do about half a turn at a time and that should take the worst of it out let's have a look loosen that one and get in that one and I shall just nip up the opposite side so the spot's coming from this side of the hub I shall tighten then by about the same amount and get in Oh, there's still another bend about 180 degrees from this, but I'll just have to see if, uh, if that's... That's probably took that one out. There's one here. Right, so I'll loosen these two. these two here, the bulge goes along there but if I loosen these two by half a turn, tighten that by half a turn and possibly these two by a quarter of a turn that should pull this one in, it's a bit of a bigger dent right. Right. loosen that one a bit that one that one and a quarter of a turn on there and a quarter of a turn on there what sometimes happens is when you straighten one part it moves all the forces in the wheel change so you can end up with other wobbles but let's just see if I've got this better There's still a slight bulge there. Probably about less than a millimetre that now. Some people might want perfection, but I can cope with that. Let's have a look on the other side just to make sure. Yeah, Very slight amount there. I'll just. Uh, where's it going? turn is all that I'll need. There we go. 
Now really of course you should remove the tyre um, then you're making sure none of the spokes protrude through the rim tape and into the inner tube but um, I'm a big boy, take my own risks um, <laughs> I'm not saying you should, you can, only you can make that decision um, also ideally you need a truing stand you've got little pointers that go out the side of the rim and you can physically see or hear it when you've got them touching um, that's the ideal and if you were building a lot of rims or doing a lot of wheel truing that's the way I'd do it but this is just a rough and ready one just to take out a bit of a wobble like I say not aiming for perfection get it pointing right way first as you see a little bit of movement in the tyre because it might not be seated perfectly but uh, the rim itself doesn't have any wobble or if it does it's a millimetre or less bent spoke there hmm. I haven't noticed that before just took a knock at some point probably what uh, got it on the way to being wobbly in the first place but yeah that's a lot nicer now don't need to do the back wheel because that is as straight as an arrow can feel some of there, I think it might be the uh, little bit of rumbling might be the generator at certain speeds well anyway that's a nice quick quick and easy job to do without getting my hands too dirty brilliant the chain's usually out of sight and out of mind on these so I've taken the bottom part of the chain guard off quite easy two screws one there one there that goes through a metal there and this just clips into place here and it's held to itself price it apart and remove it from the chain anyway as you see you've got quite a bit of play in there and that's been clattering about when I've been going over bumps um, water bumps cobbled roads etc so yeah now it's just the uh, relatively straight job straightforward job of adjusting the uh, adjusting the chain obviously I'll need to adjust the gears later as well so uh, yeah but anyway yeah chain guard removal on these is a piece of cake you, yeah <laughs> the metal ones where you've got to split the frame and everything are a right pain but yeah these are uh, I think they source these from Holland or something but they work and they work well probably better if they had an inspection window in them and you could uh, check the chain tension periodically it's reasonably well oiled don't need to do that yeah, there we go tight now but not uh, not as tight as a drawstring you know not as tight as a bowstring a little, little bit I'm going to probably have to slacken it off just a touch actually it's just a little bit tight but, um, I'm going to change that as well as a 22 3 sprocket I'm going to change that for a 22 which will lower the gearing effectively better for our bills um, I should have enough room enough adjustment to not need a new chain as well but uh, and it, 22 tooth is the biggest that will fit inside the chain guard apparently a 24 touches the uh, the chain guard and wears through but uh, yeah I'll get a 22 ordered, they're only a few quid, you know, they're cheap enough to do um, yeah, just a case of taking half metal work off to get to it but uh, I'll do that anyway because I need to reseat this tyre because uh, where are we? that's still annoying me, coming off at an angle, don't like it um, in fact I'm keeping the pressure a little bit low in that one just to uh, until I sort that out but yeah, I'll just slacken that off a bit and put some oil on it and put the chain case back on then I'll just need to adjust the uh, adjust the gears okay time to put the uh, pull rod 
something. I'm not sure if you can see there. Yellow band. I think these come colour coded to each hub um, just to take up my manufacturing tolerances, but I could be wrong. Um, if you know for sure, let me know. Or it might just be that the yellow ones for the five speed. Um, but if you know for sure, yeah, pop a comment on, let us know. I'll drop a bit of oil on the shaft. Everybody needs a lubricated shaft. Here we go. In we go. Can be a bit of a fiddle with the chain, getting these to the point where they will screw in, especially when that plastic thing's in the way. Let me take it off. it's caught so uh, turn it all the way and you see that's as far as it'll go and then just back a bit that's not going to be putting anything under strain what I will do is pop a bit of oil on those links there we go now then but the black thing it's just a guide really it doesn't have a I've seen these with wheels in before now um, the real classic that I've got has one with a wheel in that doesn't do much right generally when I put the bike away after use I'll put it into uh, into top gear so nothing, the cable or the spring inside the hub is not under strain. So that's in fifth now, we'll just make sure I've got the cable end. The yellow band that I mentioned before, when you look through the hall, I won't be able to show it on video because uh, it's at a funny angle and I don't have enough light really. But um, the yellow band should just be flush with the end of the axle. Um, that gives you good gear changing. I'm also going to have to remember to put these screws back in, otherwise that'll fall off while I'm going about, going about my business. Um, so yeah, I'll just have to adjust that up and uh, Bob's your uncle and Fanny's your aunt. Okay, I'm not sure if you can actually see in there. But... Uh, if I pull this out you'll see that yellow band and that when it returns is flush with the end of the axle um, if you can't see it you'll have to take my word for it um, always make sure that this is done in second gear there's a mark on the shifter that tells you where second is for the ones without numbers but this has to be done in second gear and then you can be uh, almost assured of reasonably smooth shifting and getting the right gear at the right time don't forget your brake anchor bolt and to adjust your brake cable once you've done everything. Once everything's tight, chain case back on, brake steady and the cable are all adjusted, ready to go. Bob's your uncle and Fanny is certainly your aunt.